Hello, good morning. Welcome to National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon. It's another Investathon. It's a bright and lovely morning and we are live in Rajkot, the lovely city in Gujarat. This, as you know, is a National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon where we have two very simple aims. To invest, well, to get you to invest better so that your money runs longer, multiplies more and also to get you to run better, to be more fit, to eat better so that you live a healthy life. Like I mentioned earlier, we are live in Rajkot this morning. We've got an enthusiastic crowd. We're expecting about around more than 4,000 people this morning. It's lovely running weather, about 19 degrees Celsius, comfortable, cool and comfortable to run. I have two very special guests with me here this morning in our studio. First up, we have Suman Agarwal, who's a nutritionist and a fitness expert. And we have Hemant Rustagi, who's the CEO of Wise Invest Advisors. Good morning, Suman. Good morning, Hemant. Good morning. Thank you for joining me here this morning. The Investathon in Rajkot, we have two runs this morning. The first is the 6km Rajiv Gandhi Equity Saving Schemes run and the second is the 3km Power run. The first run, the 6km Rajiv Gandhi Equity Saving Scheme run has already been flagged up. As you can see, we have runners enthusiastically setting the pace for the morning. Uh, we'll take you on ground in a bit when the second race is just about to be flagged up. Uh, till then, uh, Suman, my first question to you. It's early in the morning, bright and early. People are running there for us in Rajkot. Now, the thing is, these guys who are running there aren't, you know, professional marathoners. They might be people who might have just yesterday gone out and bought uh, a pair of running shoes, a pair of tracks, t-shirts, whatever, to run, to be fit, to create awareness. What's the, your advice to them on what's the correct nutrition they need to take just before they run, it's early in the morning, you know, you've just woken up maybe two hours early before, the, before you're running. What should they eat before they run? I think that uh, what they could take is maybe just simple nimbu pani with sugar and salt or Gatorade. Mm -hmm. is, uh, that's all they need because it's not a long run. Mm -hmm. So they can just do away with this or even uh, a glass of juice is okay. fine. But there is this thing, you know, people always say that, you know, you should maybe eat a fruit before you run or maybe have some dates. Or nowadays, they, a lot of people talk about having whey. There is some kind of whey that you should have before a run and after a run. What's your take on that? No, no, no whey protein just mm. before the run or after the run. Okay. I think that's for weight training, okay. not for running. Running, you purely need carbohydrates. Okay, that's all right. It. That's just the pure... And for a very long run, like mm -hmm. uh, people who do 21-kilometer marathon yeah. or 42, they require to take maybe uh, an hour before the run, uh, fat-free milk with banana, okay. or uh, and then just before the event, maybe 35 grams of glucose diluted in water is... That's, That's because they're heading for, a, yes, for the long, long run. so that they don't hit a wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys here, they're running short runs, but the aim is to look at the long run for investing as well as health. Hey, month, we're talking about long-term investing, looking at the long-term goal. How important is financial planning? Is financial planning for a person in achieving that long-term goal? I think it's absolutely important because whenever we talk about money and what we generally see is that every investor start investing in a haphazard manner. I mean, you don't really plan as to what you want to do with your money, yeah. how much money you have to invest. So I think it's very, very important that everyone should be doing a financial planning. And when we talk about financial planning, it sounds very complicated. But believe me, it's a very, very simple process. There are a couple of things that every investor needs to do when we talk about financial planning. The first one is to establish what your goals are. All of us have different goals. You have some goals to be achieved in short term, medium term, long term. Why it is important to establish goal is then you know exactly in which direction your money has to go. So like I said, you have time horizon for each goal. Also, you have to quantify them. There has to be a target. For example, if I'm planning for my retirement, which may be, let's say, 15 years away, then I should know how much money I need for my retirement. Yes. So it's very important to set a target. And especially when you talk about the long term, you mm -hmm. must consider inflation. The mistake that many investors make is do not consider inflation. Okay. I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. If someone is planning for his uh, child education, mm -hmm. which is, let's say, 10 years away, when he requires money after 10 years, mm -hmm. if that education is going to cost 25 lakhs, if I consider inflation at the rate of 7%, the actual cost is going to be 50 lakhs. So imagine so, if he were to plan for 25 lakhs, he's going to have a shortfall of 50 lakhs. So have an investment plan in place, set your targets. Second thing is very important aspect after that is to create a budget. Yes. Now that once you know how much money you need to achieve each of your goals, you need to create a budget. The budget is important because that tells you how much money you actually have to invest. Hmm. Now, for example, if you need to invest 50,000 rupees per month and you only have 25,000, then the time is for you to prioritize which goals you yeah. would like to yeah. go for first. So create a budget, then also focus on risk management. Hmm. 
Right. This is one area which generally everyone ignores. When, when I'm talking about risk, risk management, management, I'm basically talking about insurance. Okay. All of us believe nothing is going to go wrong with yes. me. So I don't need life insurance. I don't need yes. health insurance. I'm fit and fine. <laughs> Absolutely important. And another important thing is to have a plan to repay your debt. What happens mm -hmm. is ideally you should not have a debt. Mm -hmm. But in today's time, it is not possible not to have a debt. Yes. So it's important to differentiate between what is a good debt and what is a bad debt. Okay, Himant, I'll come back to you in a second on that. As you can see on screen, we flagged off our three kilometer power run. You can see the enthusiastic, the number of people that have turned up to support this initiative, to be a part of this initiative. That is the three kilometer power run in uh, Rajkot at National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18 in Westathon. We have a number of our chief guests there. We have Mr. Janak Kotak, who's the mayor of Rajkot City. We have Mr. A.B. Ravi from CNBC TV 18. Um, we have Mr. Ravi Varanasi from NSC and Mr. Hari K. from NSC flagging off this second run of uh, our uh, Investathon this early morning in Rajkot. You can see it's a, it's a mixed crowd, you know, that's the beauty of the Investathon. We've got youngsters as well as middle-aged people, everyone getting together to push on this initiative. Uh, Hemant, we were talking, you were talking about financial planning. Now, the one other important aspect of financial planning as I believe is uh, monitoring your portfolio. But how often should I be monitoring my portfolio? You know, generally, uh, you're absolutely right. I think it's very, very important to monitor the portfolio. Mistakes that investors make is once they start investing or once they invest the money, they don't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. When the markets are doing very well, they're very happy. Yes. So they don't want to obviously <laughs> look at it because they're making a lot of money. And when they're not making money, they just put it in the cover saying, no, this is very depressing. I don't want to look okay. at it. So, <laughs> so both ways, they don't want to look at it. I think it's very important for every investor to realize that mon monitoring is as important as making the right investment decisions. Okay. Now, monitoring is important because then, like we talked about giving direction to your mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. you need to ensure that your money is going in the, in the right so direction. So six months, once six uh, months, three months? I would say... Uh, Yes, once in six months, Okay. but not from the point of view of making changes in the portfolio every now and then. Okay. I think, for example, if you're investing in equity funds, yes. equity is an investment which requires nurturing, which requires a long-term yes. view. Now, it is possible that the stock that you're invested in or the fund that you're invested in mm -hmm. may not be doing well for a certain period of time, okay. but it doesn't mean that every time you don't see a performance, yeah. you just uh, you know take out that fund and put some other fund or change your asset allocation. Mm -hmm. It was very common to see investors moving money from equity to debt and debt yeah. to equity, not, not the right way. So monitor it. Okay. Monitor it from the point of view to make sure that it's going in the right direction, but don't keep okay. making changes. Give it some time to, okay. to perform. Cool. Suman, so you were talking earlier about what people need to eat when they run in the morning. And like, like I told you that I had heard that people should be having fruits every morning. And what, you know, there's this huge confusion people have about the main groups of food. Their carbohydrates, their fats. I mean, of course, I don't know all of them, which is why you're here. So tell us a little bit, because you've mentioned this in your new book that's just come out, Unjunked, where you mentioned some of the five golden rules of eating correctly, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. So just tell us a little bit about that. Walk us through that. See, what I believe and I've been practicing since uh, uh, 10 to 15 years is that you have to have your meal timings in place, which is breakfast, lunch, snacks and dinner. Mm. I call these as the major meals. So uh, the first golden rule is that know your correct time of the meal. Okay. The time of the meal is as important as the meal itself. So suppose if your breakfast is at 9 o'clock, you should ideally give four hours gap. Mm -hmm. to lunch which mm -hmm. is one and if your lunch is at one then your evening snack should be uh, around five and your dinner should be nine okay so ideally lunch and dinner should be eight hours mm -hmm. and breakfast and dinner, dinner should, should be, be 12, 12 hours. hours but like with the new fad people say you should eat by seven yeah. but tell me if you eat at seven you're definitely going to binge at 11 in the night if yeah. you're awake till 12. And I don't think so uh, with the today's time and world and the kind yeah, of... There are very few people who actually end up sleeping yeah. before 12. So then it's such a long sleep. gap, they end up binging yeah. and then they have their breakfast late. So the whole uh, metabolism suffers Yes. and the true. sleep pattern suffers. So yeah. people who eat early actually cannot have a nice sleep. Okay, yeah, that's imp that's yeah. Yeah, that's true. Makes sense because you're hungry when you go to sleep, and yeah. then the stomach never. I mean, you, yeah. the stomach gives you signals that it's hungry. Yes. You never end up having a peaceful sleep. Peaceful sleep. So, uh, if an early riser can have breakfast at eight, then dinner should be at eight. And what about um, the important groups? Like, I mean, yeah. So I was coming to that. Yeah. The second uh, most important thing is how to combine your meal. The combination we call the balance, which is. Uh, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner especially should be a balance of protein, fats and carbs. Okay. So, 
if you uh, a person who wants to follow a healthy diet would think that juice and sandwich or juice and upma or poha would yeah, be yeah. a good choice uh -huh. but i think it's a wrong combination again because it's carbohydrate juices are carbs and sandwich is purely carbs so you're left with no protein okay. maybe little fat which comes in the butter, butter. so the ideal ideal combination would be maybe milk or mm. buttermilk along with sandwich or an egg sandwich so you're saying it's okay to have fat because there is this always thing that oh i don't want i'll have a sandwich but no butter yeah. on the sandwich there's this this huge avoidance of fats yeah actually uh, i call fats as the necessary evils because <laughs> uh, um i think uh, too much of it is bad as you know we it accumulates everywhere on our body and too mm -hmm. little is also extremely extremely bad i uh, a lot of people think that fats are only required for lubrication yeah. but they don't know it's uh, uh, the most important four vitamins a d e k mm. only travel in our body through, through fat, fat medium okay. so if you have you do not have uh, fats in your diet so you have a deficiency of these four vitamins mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. also uh, they are required for immunity which yeah. we are not aware yeah. mm -hmm. people who are very less fat in their diet they will always suffer from uh, cold and cough then fats are major component of uh, hormones uh, production in our body so the hormonal imbalance are actually a lot of them are related to fat deficiencies fat in the diet okay so yeah basically you need to have a good balanced diet you got to eat healthy to, and you got to have a ba balanced diet to eat healthy uh, himan similarly balanced diet for good health you got to have a good financial balanced plan to have good financial health Uh, and get a lot of wealth and make sure your wealth runs longer what are some good investment habits that people should have to ensure that their money runs longer well, i think there are few things you know uh, first thing everyone needs to understand that investment is a process it's not a one time activity yeah. it's not that you can get up one day one fine day and you know say okay i start investing the money without having any idea as to what you want to do with your money so i think it's very very important to understand that it's a process it's a lifelong process in fact for someone who is young and to start investing hmm. he may be investing for the next 35 40 years so i think everyone needs to realize that it's a process like i said the second is very important to start investing early many of us do not want to start investing early one of course when you are young you want to you know spend yeah. money yeah. Uh, yeah. because that is what you have been you know dreaming about that okay when is the day when i start earning and spending mm. which is all right i can understand that do it for some time but i think somewhere you need to get into the habit of start investing so starting investing early is a is a great thing that's because especially when you're investing for the long term yes. you benefit from power of compounding the power yeah. of compounding is it's called the eighth wonder of the world why because it allows you to earn return on return which means that you know if you allow your money to grow over a period of time mm. you can get fantastic results third thing very very important is especially for having a sound financial health is to follow an asset allocation model now what does it mean we have different asset classes you have equities we have gold we mm. have debt and we also have real estate and other commodities so i think it's very important to have a diversification in the portfolio and that comes only when you do proper asset allocation which means that when you're investing for the long term your risk is inflation mm -hmm. make sure that you're investing in the manner where you're able to beat inflation yeah. when you're investing for the short term your risk is capital loss there you start investing in okay. debt when you talk about gold you know there's so much craze about gold we indians love gold mm -hmm. so i think yeah. it's uh, all of us would like to have gold mm -hmm. i think it's important <laughs> to have it but have it in the right proportion maybe 10% of it okay. so have a proper asset allocation, asset allocation. Oh, that That's works for you in the long run on that note let's go on ground to ashmit kumar in rajkot he's got a guest with him in rajkot at the investathon over to you ashmit right so mate um, rajkot here woke up to the chills uh, very cold in the morning i woke up uh, feeling very cold about 17 degrees it was early in the morning but that didn't discourage uh, people from joining us from joining us in large numbers in fact in fact uh, uh, as you must have seen in the visuals that the flag of a large number of people joining us rajkot really impressing uh, really participating in in, in the investathon and well speaking of rajkot uh, joining me right now is mr ajay bhadu he's the commissioner of uh, rajkot here uh, so welcome firstly uh, again we've been to a number of cities that's the theme that investathon is all about going to tier 2 cities encouraging people informing people but the response here has been phenomenal a large number of people coming out especially for the 3 km run large numbers a quick word from you about the response that rajkot has given us the response has been amazing i think very very enthusiastic response from the rajkotians and i am very glad that this event has come to rajkot uh, india's small and medium towns are emerging um, uh, centers of uh, economic growth now so i think this is this event is a very good uh, uh, step ahead 
for the entrepreneurs, for the investors who want to, uh, more and more number who, who want to, you know, join in. So great response. So Investathon, from what I understand, is as much about uh, investment and finance as it is about healthy living. And you appear to be one of the fittest bureaucrats that I've come across. So a quick word about, a quick tips or two about uh, healthy living as well. Oh, we have so many facilities in Rajkot. So I think, uh, and the, the climate here is the, uh, one of the best. So uh, I think walk and run and, uh, you know, all kinds of facilities are there. Gyms are there. So Rajkotians need to be uh, more fit. Uh, talking about myself, I just uh, uh, jog a while and, uh, you know, sometimes I go to gym. Right, so a regular workout, a regimen is important as far as uh, staying in shape is concerned, as well as uh, for a good portfolio as well. So, again, those are the initial thoughts coming in from Rajkot. We'll, of course, be coming back with the, also a la large number of guests who've joined us here. Again, large numbers, phenomenal response uh, coming in from Rajkot in Gujarat. With that, it's back to you. Thank you so much. That was Ashmit uh, on ground in uh, Rajkot at the Investathon. Um, we'll be going back to him very shortly. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, Suman, is, you know, there is a lot of confusion that, uh, well, it's like this. So some people say you should eat every two hours. Somebody says you should eat every four hours, like you were earlier saying. Somebody says don't eat after 7 p.m. In the words of our friends there in Rajkot, so chale che, what am I supposed to do? I'm so confused. Yeah, I keep hearing that uh, many people talk about that you should eat every two hours and you can lose weight with that. So, but I have seen that uh, one basic concept everyone has to understand that once you eat a major meal like a breakfast, yeah, yeah. so your stomach is going to take three hours to process it. A lot of things goes on in the three hours, then it leaves the stomach. Yeah. But suppose if you eat something solid again, some biscuits at 11, suppose uh -huh. you had your breakfast at 9, then the acidity and gas develop because you haven't digested your uh, food properly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I would ask everyone who comes to me to eat not before three hours at least. Okay. The major meal gap, as I mentioned earlier, should mm -hmm. be four uh -huh. hours, but three hours is also fine, but not before three hours. If you're hungry, yeah. Before that, then you could have a, a buttermilk or tea or coffee okay. or soup or salad or fruits. That's okay. your best okay. in-between meals. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Himant, you know, one of our runs is the six-kilometer Rajiv Gandhi equity saving scheme run, which has just been, uh, I think it was in the last calendar year that was mentioned in the budget and it's been put into place. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this scheme? Well, I think it's a great initiative. It's basically, you know, because in India we have a very low participation in equity. Yes. Now, this is a, this is a scheme which has been introduced under a new section, this is section 80 CCG. Now, what happens is this is meant only for the first-time investors. And how the first-time investors have been defined is any investor who did not have a DMED account before 23rd of November, yeah. and even if he had one, yeah. he should not have transacted in that. So, okay. one, it is only for investors mm. who never invested in Mm -hmm. equity. The second is restricted to only those who have a gross income of up to 10 lakhs. Yes. Uh, it's not available to anyone who is earning more than uh, 10, 10, 10 lakhs. lakhs. And there are very clearly defined some securities where the money can be invested. Mm -hmm. These are BSC 100 index, CNS 100 index, or the equity shares of, or F FPO, that is a follow-up yeah, uh, public yeah. issue of uh, PSUs termed as Maharatna, Navratna and Miniratna okay, or okay. also even the IPO of some of the PSUs which have an annual turnover of more than 4,000 crore. So, so you can invest only in these plus you can also invest in exchange traded funds of So basically funds. reaching out to a lot of people in tier 2, tier 3 cities mostly but of course there might be some, I mean so it's, it's open, it's mainly aiming at new investors, getting new people into the equity markets. See so right? the whole idea is that yeah. yeah. Um, over, let's go on ground to Ashmit at, in, at the Investathon in Rajkot, he's got a guest with him. Over to you Ashmit. Well, that's right, Sumit. Uh, we're joined here by a large number of investors uh, from Rajkot. In fact, uh, joining me right now is Mr. Vikram Rana. He's the director of uh, Jyoti CNC. So right across to you, um, at this point, uh, one lump number that's often thrown around, one statistic that's often thrown around is uh, India's large savings rate. But how do we get that message? How do we turn those savings into investments is one question that a lot of us have been asking. How do we get that message to a large number of, say, the participants who've joined us, a lot of them being young, energetic? How do we turn that energy and all those savings into investments? सब लोगों को ऐसे इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए सबको अभी सब फास्ट तो हो गए लेकिन अभी धीरे-धीरे सब लोग इन्वेस्टमेंट में भी आ रहे हैं और यंगस्टर्स जो है वो सब भी अभी पूरा पैसा इन्वेस्टमेंट करने के लिए पूरा तैयार करते हैं और तैयार दे रहे हैं पूरा इन्वेस्टमेंट्स के लिए 
बिल्कुल सो दैट्स ऑफ कोर्स द सेंस कमिंग इन फ्रॉम मिस्टर विक्रम राणा वेर इंडिकेटिंग दैट पर्स इट्स वाइज टू स्टार्ट अर्ली दैट्स ऑफ कोर्स वन मैसेज कमिंग इन एंड ऑफकोर्स बी कमिंग बैक विद मोर नंबर ऑफ टिप्स ऑन बोथ हेल्दी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एंड हेल्दी लिविंग दैट विल बी जस्ट द शॉर्ट पेट विद दैट इट्स बैक टू यू Thank you Ashmit that was Ashmit Kumar on ground at Rajkot where National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon is being run live stay tuned we'll be back after this very short break Welcome back you're watching National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon this morning we're in Rajkot as you can see excited enthusiastic people running we have two runs this morning the 6 km Rajiv Gandhi equity saving schemes run and the 3 km power run both are being run around the race course ring road in Rajkot and let's go on ground let's hear from the people on ground Ashmit Kumar is on ground at Rajkot over to you Ashmit Right, so may the fact and just join you with a brief update of where the races are. We already find that some people are coming back from the six-kilometer run, so it has been a, a quick a sprint, uh, not exactly a marathon. But never mind. Uh, moving forward, of course, um, uh, the the two themes that uh, that that Investathon engages in one healthy living, the other one healthy investment. And joining us to discuss more on that, of course, right now is Mr. Neeraj Chandra. He's the director of Atal Auto. So a brief word with you right now that it's very important to watch your savings. It's very important to watch your investments. It is also equally important to watch your watch your waist watch your waistline. I beg your pardon. And you, I believe, have done a fairly good job of it. So, a quick uh, tip or two about how you keep your workout regimen and how important it is again to watch your waistline. Uh, frankly speaking, about the first one, uh, NSC is always there to take care uh, about the first option. The waistline is obviously the healthy entrepreneur. You really need to work for yourself, work work for your family. So it's better to. go for uh, the fitness programs right so again uh, stay fit and stay sharp that's of course the message coming in from the entrepreneurs based out of here gujarat and rajkot so again uh, that's the message coming in and uh, i'll come back with lots more back to you Thanks, Ashmit. Well, you can see Rajkot is actually quite famous for the pendas or the sweet meats, the pedas they are called. But I'm really impressed how people seem to manage eating a lot of those pedas, and they're so enthusiastic about uh, exercising. They're so fit; it's just fantastic. Uh, Himant, I want to talk to you about it's the fag end of the financial year. We're already in Feb 2012. Next year. I mean, next month, 31st March 2012, end of the financial year. What can people do now who haven't planned for their tax-saving investment? Because this is the time that people just start running like haywire that I need to invest somewhere so that I can get the benefit of tax saving. Your advice to these guys: What can they do? My first advice would be to make sure that next year they are not in this situation. <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is this is obviously not the right way that you you know wait till uh, the fag end of the year to start yeah. planning for your uh, tax-saving investment. But since you are there. Uh, what needs to be done is to make sure that you don't invest in a very haphazard manner yeah. generally what happens is that there is a pressure that okay i have just got one month to start uh, you know to complete my investment for tax saving so i'll invest whichever options is being suggested to me not the right way first thing is anyone who has not invested for tax saving is to ascertain how much tax he or she has to pay hmm. you know many a times we see investors just investing hmm. and at the end of the day they realize that either they have invested less or they have invested more okay. so first thing is to ascertain especially for the self employed people yes. for the salaried class of course your employers will tell you how much you need to invest but i think for the self employed is very very important to first ascertain as to how much they need to actually save you have this section 80c under which yeah. you can invest up to 1 lakh rupees and save taxes now second thing you need to see is then which are your compulsory investments now when we talk about compulsory investment you have employees provident fund hmm. if you are working in organized sector there is going to be a epf yes. then there is a life insurance premium yes. all of us if anyone who has insurance uh, policy will have to pay premium the third is if you are repaying your housing loan <coughs> the principal amount is covered under section 80c so that again is fix mm. then you have public provident fund ppf as mm -hmm. is popularly known there again it's not mandatory yeah but most of the people who invest in ppf have a fixed amount to invest look at these mandatory mm. saving and see how much of it has already gone in mm. if you have already achieved the target of 1 lakh you need not do anything if there is a shortfall find out what is the shortfall 20000 30000 whatever the shortfall is yeah. then there are different options under atc okay. 
you have traditional options like in addition to these you have national savings certificate yes. you have five year bank deposit you have post office time deposit for five right. years right. on equity side you have equity linked savings schemes which allows you to invest money for a period of three years there is a lock in of three year there mm. which is again in terms of potential is the best perhaps the best but being equity is obviously also volatile mm. so these are the options that are available yeah. like i said first thing is certain how much you need to save and then look yeah, at these yeah. options and look at compulsory option before you look at any other option so just don't run with the crowd when everyone says okay financial years first check your own in house portfolio check your portfolio whether you actually need to invest something to save tax maybe you've invested enough that's already covering uh, the tax uh, saving limit that is uh, mandatory on ground let's go to ashmit at rajkot at the investon ashmit has another guest with him over to you ashmit <laughs> Well, I believe uh, there's a little bit. Uh, I think he can't hear us. I guess it's too loud. There's too many enthusiastic people. There. I think they're cheering on the investathon. We'll go back to Ashmit in a short uh, bit. Suman, I want to talk to you about you know a lot of the all the people. Um, okay, wait. What we'll do is Suman, we'll come back to you in a second. Sorry about that. Ashmit is ready. Ashmit, over to you on ground it, at investathon in Rajkot. Over to you, Ashmit. Uh, right, so we, uh, right, so with apologies for that little uh, mix-up there. But anyways, moving ahead again, massive build-up here, and of course we'll be coming you, coming to you with the visuals of again the large crowds that have built up. But uh, joining me right now is Mr. Ketan Malwari, again a very keen investor from Rajkot. So a quick question to you: uh, The Gujarati community is very famous for its uh, sense of entrepreneurship, for its level of engagement with investment and finance. So what is it that an ordinary retail investor can hope to learn from this Gujarati spirit, so to speak? So Gujarati person has a risk-bearing appetite. There's risk in the blood they would like to venture into any new things which is possible in this world so gujarati per se are entrepreneur they would always like to venture into business and they would invest the last penny for any business yeah Um, well, they have a good risk appetite. You say they also have a good appetite for a number of pedas here. Difficult keeping your waistline in check. Yeah, definitely. But then uh, we have a lot of other activities too. Yeah, fair enough. So again, uh, that's the message coming in from Mr. Ketan Malwari here that uh, one can hope to learn from the risk-bearing appetite of uh, the ordinary Gujarati. That's the sense coming in. We'll come back to you with lots more for now. For now, it's back to you. Thank you, Ashmit. Lovely words from Mr. Ketan Marwadi there uh, on ground at Rajkot at the Investon. Suman, I was talking to you just before we went over to Ashmit. There is a lot of the people who watch CNBC TV 18 are uh, traders and uh, who are trading in the stock market or who follow the stock market really religiously. And the stock market, as you know, runs from the morning till. Uh, About four o'clock, right afternoon. There is no break. There is no lunch break when the terminals stop. So, what's your advice to these people? How should they prepare and eat their uh, meals to take into account that they're pretty much in front of the terminal or on the phone the whole day? Yeah. So we have, we do have lots of uh, people from stock market coming okay. to us for an advice, and rightly said, they have a huge meal at the end of at four mm. o'clock, and that could be vada pav or. Some of what was easily or whatever. quickly available there. So yeah. my advice to them is that they should pack a lunch from home, yeah. and uh, so easy lunch, which is like a finger food for Indians, is not sandwiches, correct? Mm -hmm. We would like masala, and uh, yeah. so I tell them to carry rolls. Now the rolls, when it comes to your mind, it is uh, uh, like a franki, yes. which is made of potato and onions and uh, roti. Now that's carbohydrate and carbohydrate. So I tell them to make chole rolls. or rajma rolls or yeah. tofu rolls or paneer rolls okay. which is a balance of protein and carbohydrate so which they can have so that's what i do if i have a very long day and i always carry two rolls with me because i can keep working and yeah, eating my yeah, rolls right, at the right. same time or non vegetarians can also opt for egg sandwich or chicken sandwich a chicken rolls also now you can get good chicken, chicken rolls, yeah. chicken i believe is really good in its uh, roasted or grilled form as yeah, as a good yeah. source of protein and what about diet food now diet food is always has this uh, notion when you talk about diet food is it's going to be bland it's going to be non tasty it's going to be tough to make debunk or rather as your book goes unjunk that myth for me yeah see actually the term diet is also uh, understood wrongly people say i'm going on a diet and if diet is like what you eat is your diet in any case so i think uh, people need to understand dieting means doesn't mean that you are eating diet diet food yeah, as you yeah. say so which is uh, boiled and soups and salads that is the thing associated with dieting that's what i am trying to break through my uh, consultations with uh, for last 15 yeah. years 12 years is uh, dieting doesn't mean that you have to eat soup and salad my menu for a person who is trying to lose weight would be idli sambar okay could be chole 
chole and paratha but not chole kulcha chole yeah. kulcha becomes very high fat and maybe okay. a bit of junk then uh, so pav bhaji is Okay, and uh, we have a concept of completing the plate so how do you have pav bhaji and still lose weight is okay. uh, we have mentioned so you can uh, have pav bhaji with maybe little sprouted salad and buttermilk which completes your plate and it's a complete meal itself and uh, like say puri is considered yeah. junk yeah. now you can change the base maybe put a cucumber slice and have okay. the same things on top okay. and it's uh, unjunk okay wow this so. is you're, you're, you're totally changing the notion of so called diet food for yes, us yes. which is really good really helpful okay let's go on ground to ashmit he's got another guest with him over to you ashmit Nice to meet you. Uh, joining me this time are two very special Pana. guests. Uh, one, Mr. Jayesh Shet, uh, and also with us uh, joining is Mr. Jyotendra Mehta. Um, so, quick word to you. Judging from the massive response that we have received this morning from last quarter, uh, it's been a massive response, especially from the young crowd. So, a large number of young people joining, and as, with, even with respect to healthy living as well as with healthy investments, they say that it's important to start young. So, quick word from you about uh, getting the message across to these young people about the need to start young. Can you believe? I understand that uh, uh, get them here. Yeah. That is the word. I mean, right time. And uh, people uh, together and here are really young, and they, they should be aware about the saving habits and the future of uh, their future planning also. So future planning, the investment is needed, and their investment is really get yield. in the next uh, coming year so uh, uh, this, this kind of awareness is very much absolutely mr sir let me also come to you on this very question that it's very relevant and important for people to start young how is the response uh, if i can ask you that uh, from the uh, from the youth of rajkot and from the youth in general this wonderful morning abhi jo investment karenge khas karine jo hamare matlab mein logo ko sab kam par नॉलेज है यंग निवेशक को इसकी मार्केट में राजीव गांधी से और उससे नॉलेज आएगा उसको फ्यूचर में बहुत लंबा गेन मिलेगा छोटम के लिए नहीं है सब लोगों के लिए इसकी Mr. So, that's the message coming in from these uh, sharp investors from Rajput so that it's important to start young and go long, uh, look, look out for long-term investments, and again, very important to get the message across, uh, message across, especially to the young crowd about the need to start investing early. Back to you, Sumit. Thank you, Ashmit. Yes, those are two very important messages. Number one is that you should start investing early so that well, your money can go longer, your money can multiply more. You, like we were earlier talking, we talk about the compounding interest of growth of your money, and also about giving attention to your health. It's really important to eat right and to be fit so that well, you have a healthy and a wealthy life, which is two very things that basically the Investathon is based on. You're watching National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon coming to you live from Rajkot. We'll be back. Back in a short time. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back to National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon. We're live in Rajkot this morning. We have two very special runs. The first one is the six-kilometer Rajiv Gandhi Equity Saving Schemes run, and the second is the three-kilometer Power Run. Both of the runs have, of course, as you've been watching the program, they've of course been flagged off, and pretty much they're just finish about finishing. Some of the early runners, the front runners, have returned back to the finish point. But let's go on ground to Ashmit Kumar. He has a guest with him. Over to you, Ashmit. हिंदुस्तानी खून कब खोल नया जो भाई साहब इंडिया पहली बार फरवा आया आया हुआ है उसी के हमने खबर न थी कि भाई इंडिया में शू जो जो हो क्या क्या जो जो इंडिया 
I think first of all, I would like to congratulate CNBC and NSE for organizing such, an, such an event, meaningful event. I think that this event is through Jada Se Jada Log, encourage Honge market may invest in the market, Jada Se Jada Log, aware Honge is market may invest in the market. So, I think that this event is a lot of money and Logo Ko Jada Se Jada, we have to be aware of it. Bilkul, uh, that's of course the sense uh, coming in from Mr. Uh, uh, Rupesh there. Of course, uh, though the disturbing trend is that uh, there are, again, the level of awareness is low, but there is, of course, also a sense of optimism uh, uh, going forward from here. With that, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Ashmit. Uh, hey, Mant, you know, we were earlier talking about the Rajiv Gandhi equity saving schemes, and because it is the six kilometer run is called the Rajiv Gandhi equity saving scheme run at the Investathon. Tell me a little bit more about that. We kind of got cut off. We had to, uh, there was a guest on ground and we had to run down there. Tell me a little bit more about the race. Yeah, Sumit, so like I was saying earlier, I think it's a great initiative to, you know, bring more and more people into the fold of equity investing. Uh, two, three important things I think which we, we couldn't uh, mm -hmm. finish then. One is that this is a one time exemption given. Okay. okay, so one we said, you know, up to for people who earn up to 10 lakhs, but this you can claim only one time. You cannot claim it every year. So it's very, very important. The maximum money that you can invest in the scheme is 50,000 rupees. Mm. You get tax rebate on 50% of that. Mm. So if you're in 10% bracket, you get a, a tax assumption of 2,500. That's the maximum that you get. Yeah. And if you're in 20% tax bracket, you get a maximum assumption of 5,000. Okay. Three, uh, import, another important thing is that there is a lock-in of three years. Mm -hmm. The first one year is a fixed lock-in. That means you can't sell, if you have invested in some stocks, you can't sell those stocks. But after one year you can sell, but that money has to be reinvested because the overall the lock-in period is three right. years. So it has to be reinvested for another okay. period of two years. Mm -hmm. If you invest 50,000 rupees, your balance in the scheme always has to be around 50,000. Okay. And my advice to investors would be, because this is meant for first-time investor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They should, you know, the best thing would be to go for exchange-traded fund of mutual funds. Okay. Because mutual funds... You have, you know, even though it's not an active management, it's a basically index-based scheme. Mm -hmm. So you don't nearly require expertise of a fund manager. But I think it's much, much simpler. But even for ETF, you need to open a DMAT account. And the yeah. best thing is that there are now no frills DMAT account being opened, which means you only pay a nominal fee for a period of three years. Yes. Unlike the normal DMAT account where you have to pay maintenance charges every year. So I think it's a great step. But I believe in the next coming budget, mm -hmm. you're going to see some changes. I think there are some changes that require to be made yes. to actually make it more uh, appealing to investors. Okay, you spoke about the budget. We'll come back to you on that in just a bit. I have a good question for you on that. But let's go on ground to Rajkot at the Investathon. Ashmit Kumar has a guest with him. Over to you, Ashmit. Right, Sumit, again, a number of guests joining us today. If I can just briefly introduce them right now. Joining me at this point is Mr. Ashok Kayani. He's the CEO of SK Securities. Also joining me right now is Mr. Dhawal Dave. He's the CEO of Sunflower Broking. Uh, so I'll get across to you first. Again, uh, healthy investments, healthy living. Again, the two themes that Investathon claims. Uh, a quick word about healthy investments. We, we've seen that the level of awareness is low. It's very important to spread the word and also, of course, you know, to ensure that uh, the savings are turned into a channelized into investment. So a quick word on that. Uh, definitely. Uh, today, Invest uh, NAC and the CNBC TV organized this event uh, for the and uh, you know that uh, recently the uh, Mr. P. Chidambaram, Honorable uh, Finance Minister, uh, launched a scheme for the Rajiv Gandhi Equity Scheme 2012. Actually, this scheme is for the specially uh, tax benefit uh, given to the retail investor uh, who those income. Uh, below 10 lakhs rupees and definitely uh, it will uh, 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 right, so essentially move to encourage retail participation so again a step towards healthy investments but that's one side of the story the other side of course being about healthy living uh, a quick word from you sir that's healthy investments healthy portfolio that's of course one side of the story it's very also important to keep your body in shape to keep in shape to again uh, healthy living so to speak so again a quick word on, uh, with you on that yes, as we do in SIP in equity no? every day we do something in equity invest in that same I think we have to invest in our body also. Like running, like what we are doing over here right now, Investor Thorn. It is a great initiative by NSC. So once we do it regularly, just like equity, do it regularly and keep yourself into shape and then run into the marathon of the equity. Right, so again, uh, diligence uh, pays off not only in the equity market, but also as far as uh, uh, your personal your body shape is concerned. So again, uh, the message coming in from Rajkot. Back to you. 
Thanks, Ashmit. Interesting words from Mr. Dave there about, well, he's equating investing in equities through SIPs. Well, it's pretty much like investing in your health. Small steps that take you a long way. You're watching National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon coming to you from Rajkot. We'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome. You're watching National Stock Exchange and CNBC TV 18's Investathon. We are in Rajkot this morning. We have two runs, the 6km Rajiv Gandhi Equity Saving Schemes run and the 3km Power run. As you can see on the other side of your screen, both the runs have pretty much completed. Everyone's gathered up for the prize distribution ceremony. We'll be going down to that in a short bit. Uh, Suman, I have a question for you on diets. Now, every six months or something, you read about some diet, you hear about some new fad diet, you might call it, which is... Different things. So eat only vegetables one day, eat only fruits the other day, or it'll be stuff like, okay, don't eat the whole day. I mean, it's a mixed thing. What's your take on these fat diets? Are they good? Should we keep changing our diet every six months? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what Mr. Heyman said, that you should not be uh, doing, a, like, you know, uh, without guidance, any investments. And, and uh, as it's important to invest in your health because uh, no matter how much wealth you have, if you don't have good health, that means uh, you can't enjoy your wealth. So the same way, you should not take all these tips from books or yeah. magazines and just start following them. You need to go to a counsellor mm. or a nutritionist and to understand what is the nutrition for yourself because everybody is body, body is different. They need to eat as per their own body structure and type and everything. So suppose uh, uh, till the age of 30 you can do fat diets and not have a really side effect on you but a lot of people are showing side effects but like only watermelon or only fruit. So what is it? It's like you lose a lot of weight, definitely, but a lot of muscles uh, and right. hair. Oh yeah. <laughs> and skin texture. Okay, okay. And muscles. Right. So then you're prone to back pain, spondylitis, and knee pains, which will start creeping into your life much earlier if you do such diets. And forget that your BMR drops, so you're going to gain back that weight very fast soon. In any case. So what's the right way to lose weight hmm. is. Understand your building blocks, which is like proteins and fats are your building blocks of your body. Carbohydrates are for energy. So if you want to lose weight, cut down your carbs, but not omit them. And sustain your proteins and fats in your diet. And uh, understand your whole nutrition properly and lose weight. Okay, and so. with exercise, like right. how these guys are doing now. Yeah, so it's important not to, to have a balanced diet yes. and not just go... With, but should right. we be changing our diet every few months? I mean... We'll, we'd get bored of eating the same kind of food, right? Do you mix things up? Is it advisable to mix things up after a few months, something like that? Yeah, of course. I think uh, more than any community in the world or any... I think Indians are uh, uh, very, very uh, prone to experimenting yeah. different <laughs> cuisines, especially Gujarati communities. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. I think you should uh, try different uh, okay. options. But if you're a vegetarian, you have to be very careful what menu you're trying because... For a, like for a Chinese meal, yes. what is your option as a vegetarian? You'll have rice and noodles and vegetables. There's no protein. It's total absence of protein. Even the Manchurian is not meat. It yes. is maida. Yeah. 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 So the, my advice is that you understand every cuisine. How much? How do you add proteins to your every cuisine? Like if you go for Italian, for a change, so it will be garlic bread and pasta and pizza. Yeah, I okay. mean, all the of protein for a vegetarian. Right. So, Makes sense. so it's really important to basically eat right, have a proper balanced diet plan that can help you uh, become healthy so that you lose weight as well as you maintain your good health. Himant, earlier you were talking about the budget. So, well, the budget's around the corner next week. There is this, always this excitement once budget week is coming, a few weeks before budget, that the budget is coming, the budget is coming. But as a common retail investor, how is the budget really going to affect me or what are some of the, what is your view on some of the points in the budget that would affect normal retail investors? Well, let me begin with, you know, talking from a retail investor's perspective. Or any investor perspective. In fact, like I said, it's always a big event. Of course, it's a very important event because it actually gives direction to the economy for the next one year and also makes a lot of uh, difference to your investment portfolio or your normal life. But 
the thing is how much importance do you give to the budget i have seen investors who stop investing mm -hmm. because the budget is around the corner so see okay let's see what happens in the budget and then after that we'll decide not the right way like we were talking earlier mm -hmm. if you are investing for 10 year 15 year why should you be worried about budget every year you cannot be changing your investment plan every year looking at what the budget yes take there are maybe some changes that have to be made because there are some new provisions that have come up some new taxation have come up or some new things that have maybe introduced in the budget so it may require some changes but it should not decide how you're going to invest just because uh, you know budget is around the corner yeah. uh, you know we've talked about budget being around the corner yeah this is one time the year where all of us have a long wish list i think this year is no different hmm. all of us want a lot of things to be included but i think believe me it's a it's a difficult situation for the yeah. finance minister is under too much pressure because there is a fiscal deficit and this being the last budget before the elections i think we need to maintain the balance between what is the fiscal prudence and also what is the populism right. two three areas i would like him to really focus on mm -hmm. from the retail investor or a common investor's point of view one is education yeah. you know we all agree that education is the key to uh, nation's development mm -hmm. but what has happened is the tax assumption which are there for tuition fee for example in 1 lakh mm -hmm. is not really much so i would like him to really do something on that i would like him to enhance the limit for the you know interest on the housing loan which is only 1 yeah. and a half lakh which means that if i have a housing loan of 15 lakh <coughs> that takes care of it so i think that needs to be done then there is a medical reimbursement mm -hmm. i think the health education and housing are the three areas even though he has a lot of concern i would like him to really do something okay. which can give relief to a common man well, let's hope mr chidambaram is watching us this morning and takes your advice on these uh, very important points as you can see on the other side of your screen the prize distribution ceremony has uh, started at investathon in rajkot uh, suman uh, final questions we're coming down to the last bit of the show this morning my final question to you is there is a there's a lot of talk about b12 and d3 deficiency the vitamin deficiency in indians what is this what can be done to sort this out yeah at this i discovered say around 5 to 6 years ago that uh, uh, people because of vitamin deficiency of b12 and d3 are actually suffering from uh, major ailments yeah. so we do it on a regular basis for all the clients so the b12 deficiency is extremely common among vegetarians because the only source of b12 is milk but which is not pasteurized otherwise the b12 is not there so uh, vegetarian population which is majorly gujaratis and um, other hindus is yeah so they what can they do to uh, solve this deficiency problem are there some medicines or some food that we should take no there is no food for vegetarians i think they should just take okay. vitamin pills and okay. uh, or injections and for d3 which is uh, we are supposed to get it from sun yeah. but uh, most of the major cities are, uh, are highly polluted yeah. and we don't get the sun rays hmm. to reach our the right sun rays to reach our skin to convert it into d3 so we okay. are everyone is facing a d3 deficiency so for that also oral pills are there and they can take that otherwise it causes ailments like early diabetes blood pressure mm -hmm. uh, heart attacks and uh, worse come to worse is cancer oh people are okay. not aware yeah so okay so that's it's really important to keep these things in mind thank you so much suman thank you so much hemant for joining us this morning we are at the end of the show thank you so much for watching you've been watching national stock exchange and cnbc tv 18's investathon which was coming to you from rajkot this is done with this investathon we'll be joining you next month again stay tuned and keep watching cnbc tv 18